to allude to a film that if you haven't seen, you might, if you're a Monty Python fan. Have you ever seen, um, it's, it's the, the Graham Chapman uh, Liar's Autobiography. I've got the title wrong. It's got, it's got the word liar in it, right? Have you ever seen this? It's, um, it, was, it was made after he died. Uh, a, a whole series of animators came in and uh, animated bits of the screenplay that he'd written for you know, this uh, scabrous autobiographical <laughs> film. Um, and, you know, it's, it's different. So every sort of three, four minutes of the film is different because they're all shot by different people in different conceptions. Uh, and, and I sort of feel that we've got a version of that going here. You know, this, the Funhouse, uh, it, it attracts production. It, it's a site of, of production. And I'm talking like this because what my part of, the, of this animated film isn't very good. So. <laughs> I'm covering. Um, well, it won't sustain a lot of attention. Uh, so I'm going to do a little stand-up and then <laughs> briefly show you some code. Um, or, or I'll, I don't know, do some autobiography or something. So um, I, I'm actually in the fun house. Um, I am a character in the fun house. Um, John's son Jack today uttered a marvelous phrase. He's sitting in the you know, reproduction of the Uncle Buddy uh, production suite that we have over in the gallery. Um, and something prompted him to say, oh, I'm having an out of buddy experience. <laughs> I, you know, there's a gene, and John has passed it on, and Jack has going to pass it on. The world will never be without. Thank God. Uh, so there's the out of buddy experience, and the thing about the Funhouse is that every time you read it, creates a strong potential for an out of buddy experience because of the nature of this project, particularly back in the day when it didn't have to be run on an obscure little system, it could be run on you know, pretty much any Macintosh computer that you had lying around. Well, I happen to be in a room with a Macintosh computer and a projector and a bunch of undergraduates at a privileged institution uh, in 1989. This was actually before the Funhouse was published, when only about half of it had been written. And I was showing it to these students to illustrate one of the things that hypermedia art might be someday. You know. And um, in the process of moving from one stack to another, I happened to activate a link to a stack that did not yet exist. And when that happens, HyperCard goes out, well, actually, as I think I can make it do here, and it goes looking for things. Let's see if this is going to work. Uh, I'll come back and explain where we are, maybe. Yeah, it'll do just that. It'll say, where is sharing the where is stack sharing the fantasy? The point is that um, when this happens, now we've got a blank uh, sort of search box here. But sometimes the names of other things will appear, things that are not necessarily related to HyperCard, but which may be accessible via HyperCard or back in the day were, such as, for example, um, a spreadsheet. So I'm doing this demo of Uncle Buddy's Phantom Funhouse, and a broken link happens, and all of a sudden. Um, there's my personal financial spreadsheet um, that's listed in one of the items. And the student who was doing the demo thought, this may be part of the fun house, why not? You know, clicks on it. And the class's response after having looked at the numbers was, geez, Uncle Buddy isn't very well paid. <laughs> and that was my in-buddy experience, I guess. And I think it was later that I discovered that I was a character in the fun house. Uh, so, uh, so my contribution ultimately to this project is to go back to HyperCard uh, after 22 years. I, I think I've determined the last time I used HyperCard to, to produce anything was in the 90s, 22 years ago. Um, and I've gone back and actually built the thing that I was credited with, with doing. Uh, and, and I need to tell you what we're looking at here. So. Um, this is. <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah, um, but, but we're not at the beginning. Anyway, so this is a this is a hypercard program for a science fiction con, I guess, or a meeting of this group called Spastic. Um, 
uh, which stands for something. Uh, in St. Louis, that's hence the, the arch. Uh, and there are a number of events happening. Uh, among these is a workshop, uh, no, a round table, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I thought it was in the beginning. Let's see if I can find the round table. It's scroll down. Oh, oh, that's right, I have to scroll. Yeah, okay, is, is this, yeah, it's this one? Sorry, scroll, yeah. Um, I'm here somewhere. I scroll past. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> it goes past it. So, yeah, I'm in Salon H uh, doing uh, a roundtable called Sharing the Fantasy Interactive Fiction. Because um, I suppose at some point John and I had been talking uh, about interactive fiction or something um, back in the, in the 80s, this would have been. Uh, so, this, this is 1988. This is supposed to have happened. Um, and for, you know, decades, I suppose, I've been walking around thinking, uh, I wonder what that roundtable would have been like, what, what the transcript from that roundtable would be like. So when this occasion, and thanks to all of you, thanks to Jim, thanks to Bob, um, for making this possible, you know, because I said, okay, fine, what would the roundtable be like? There, there could be a link, but there isn't. Okay, for some reason the link's not working. Um, but here's what I built for the roundtable. <laughs> That's, uh, that's stolen. That's, uh, that's, that's somebody, somebody did this beautiful image on DeviantArt, and I murdered it. Um, uh, it's, it's a murder of a murder. Um, but so that, yeah, that sets the right tone, I think, for, for something like that. Um, so, uh, so I decided to populate the round table with some people that I kind of sort of know and sort of invented. Um, and, and here's where it becomes a shameless in joke, and John will be, and Jack, John and Jack will be the only people laughing in turn, because um, he'll know he'll know who some of these people are. Some of them are absolutely in jokes because they're only funny to me. But um, uh, so you know, taking this, so, so John's very serious about uh, the Funhouse as a modally appropriate uh, presentation of a narrative. So you're supposed to come to all of the documents. Um, as you would in your actual existence, right? So if it's a tape, it's because there's audio on it and you're going to play the tape. And just as, as Bob's absolutely brilliant, you know, video exercise uh, to deliver to the novel, I, I deviated from that uh, and I just kind of wandered off into, um, well, I won't call it a fantasy world, I'll call it uh, an alternative universe because the whole, you know, notion of the Fine House is, is that it exists in a multiverse. Uh, and, and that Uncle, Uncle Buddy has vanished from our time stream because either he didn't belong to it in the first place or he's found a way out. Um, so uh, so I, I've taken some liberties and I've, I've uh, invented a character called Trister Keen, who's one of the, the persons of this, this uh, polylogue. Um, someone call, I, I should read what he, he's a writer and rhapsode from Brooklyn and Points East. His T-shirt says this was never a game. Uh, Space Jane is a media theorist and synaptic commando. She's wearing several items from Miss Smith, Ms. Smith's actual wardrobe in the last scene of Jimmy Brody. Um, Ergoed one, and this is one I'll only get probably, is some kid from Scandinavia or Stanford or someplace. It's actually a reference, okay, I'll tell you. It's a reference to Espen Orsett, the famous, now famous media theorist, who I decided was, I, I did the chronology, he'd be 23 at the time of this. So I invited him. I invited his 23-year-old self, who was, I think, at Stanford, uh, study, studying in the U.S. at the time. Um, says he knows all about that cyberspace, but would rather be playing Mormonoids from the Deep. I, originally, this was going to be Quake, and then I realized it didn't exist in 1988. <laughs> um, uh, there's, there's Mr. Cotton Fink, and I'll just let you do the anagram on that one. Um, uh, aspiring software poet who will someday know the true name of everything. Uh, and then there's the character who represents me, uh, and you, of course, a second person, but far from secondary. Um, and so, here's, here's the transcript. Notoriously plain. Um, since this is an event in an alternate, alternative universe and a technologically determined alternative universe, um, there's something a little different about this transcript, which is that it's sort of different every time you run it. Um, now, this is all done with HyperCard. This is legitimate HyperCard. And everything Darius said is true. It is incredibly modern. And this is the same 
goofy technique that I'm still using today <laughs> in JavaScript. In point of fact, I don't think I could have scripted this in 1988. I did not know enough. I, I hadn't done enough of this kind of work. You know, to some extent, I just didn't have the balls to do some of these things. Um, I didn't know what I could get away with. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, this says uh, printed at uh, a long number. Uh, the long numbers are significant, but I won't tell you why. Um, Mr. Cotton Fink implies that few subjects are as salient as story. Sam I am ventures that story exists as a subclass of splendidness. Trister Keen asserts, asserts story defines consciousness. Space Jane proposes play holds. So I mean, I won't you know tediously read all that. Um, but we've got here a, an almost plausible um, uh, transcript of of a kind of, you know, imagine an academic meeting. Uh, <laughs> um, and it's, it's, you know, almost my work. Uh, uh, Mr. Cotton Fink's, Fink claims the key to understanding game theory is organicity. Sam I.M. contends that we know so much about game theory that we know nothing at all. Uh, that, I, that's appropriately described yeah. to me. Uh, and it goes on. Um, I will run a couple more iterations. Um, uh, we still have people asserting, but th you'll notice in the second line, now uh, we have, go configure, Mr. Cottonfink cries. Um, and uh, Space Chain here ventures something. The, the dialogue is beginning to change in form. It's not just reports of like people's statements. They're actually starting to utter things. Um, someday this will be read by 12 angry machines, Sam I am testifies. Moreover, in the year 2000, the future will be so over. <laughs> you try taking, oh, you try taking umbrage, but you can see no such thing. <laughs> now, this is actually a legitimate reference to interactive fiction. Because as it happens, I mean, again, total serendipity, total glory of the universe. I'm teaching a course in interactive fiction now, at the age of 59, you know, with a bunch of undergraduates. Uh, actually, they're the most wonderful students I've, ever, I've had in a long, long time. Um, they're honor students, and they, you know, put up with all my crap. Um, and uh, so, I mean, I've got, I actually have parser-based interactive fiction in my head right now. And this is what happens in parser-based, you know, take the lamp. You cannot see the lamp, you know, the room, but the room description told you there was a lamp. Um, let's see. Um, I hate when that happens, in fact. Yes, there it is. Serendipity. This is all randomly generated, so you know, I never know what's going to be on the screen. Uh, okay, yeah, it's another IS name. You have, that's your inventory, dimensionality, a vague impression, mass. Oh, sure, come on, come on. Come on. Um, sorry. It's, it's, okay, well, it doesn't matter because, you know, we can always make more. Um, you swear elegantly. Patent pending, ergo one rejoices. Space Jane grumbles, let no man call me an owly owl. <laughs> Ergo one implies we could yammer on about, about the message till the cows are obsolete. <laughs> Furthermore, I bought some rotor for stock today. <laughs> you try to take the blue pill, but you cannot see any such thing. Ergo one testifies, you have word the word, used the word scoot in a way I do not understand. This is another early, you know, sort of partial thing. You use the word whatever. Um, Space Jane argues that the emergence has been fatally confused with the objectification, and I'm going to lose it. Uh, ah, so, that's the most charming, charming thing about this, about this little simulated part of the funhouse is that uh, if you go on long enough, you'll be warned. You know, <laughs> really? You really want to continue? And I, I, you know, just a couple clicks more. Um, so if you continue, it will go on, because it's just generating text, and it can do this forever. Um, but it flips back because of one little, you know, one little clever programming trick I used. It flips back into this more studious mode whenever you let it recycle. So it's, it's almost like the room will settle down and they'll start to, you know, they'll, they'll converse about sustained topics for a while, um, but only for a while because the more you click, the sillier it gets. Um, until finally, you know, I'm going to get to the end here. Um, yeah, and you can't go back. Uh, so, you know, first taking large mammal, you have a cow. <laughs> I was proud of that one. Um, and there, okay, well, and finally we can say enough, and, uh, and it will allow us to make our way back into uh, the funhouse. And so this is my actual contribution to the funhouse. Um, this could be made plausibly a part of 
uh, let's say, an apocryphal Uncle Buddy's Phantom Funhouse that might go live on the internet someday. And uh, it's really, ultimately, my tribute to the work of genius that this is. Thank you.